let me take you back to 2015. I'm a dumbass freshman in high school, and I finally just got my first gaming laptop, and I am just sunk in so many good FPSs. Half-Life, TF2, and most importantly, I was psyched to having a shot at running my most anticipated game of the year, being Fallout 4. During this period, there's always this one moment that's always stuck out in my mind. One of my teachers themselves just built their own PC and wanted to get into FPSs and asked me for some recommendations. He was playing a lot of Heroes of the Storm, so I recommended Overwatch as a good introduction to multiplayer FPS. It was a much different game back then and a much different Blizzard, remember. Yet offhand, the other kids in the class overheard and basically said the equivalent of, That shit's lame, dude! Black Ops 3 is so much better! Now, I had bias beforehand towards COD due to what I heard online and from others in terms of experience, but I remember this moment in particular accentuating my hate even further. These games were nothing more to me than the same shit recycled year after year with so much downgrading from other FPSs of yesteryear. Halo was the same deal for me. Generic as shit, two weapon limit, you get the idea. Then, something happened. In the last half of my high school years, as I was talking to more people online, they began to talk more about their positive experiences and fun they had with the COD series, and as a result, persuaded me to try the series again. And eventually, I got myself a copy of COD 4 on Steam. And, well, I liked it. I loved it. I loved the story, the gunplay, the multiplayer, man. Even though Steam didn't track my hours accurately, I can say firsthand I put so much fucking time into multiplayer, even when so much of it was just custom servers running vanilla maps with double XP. Not too long after, I also got myself a completely legal copy of the Gearbox PC port of Halo 1 and fell in love as so many others did back in 2001. This wasn't right. I was supposed to hate these games, not love them. And yet I did anyways, and in turn I felt like I was a bit lied to. These games were nothing like people made them out to be. As the years pass and retro FPS make more of a comeback with games like Dusk and Doom 2016, I began to see more and more of this true and tired circle jerk just turned up to 11, mostly from people who had never even played or touched these games. And it's only gotten worse, just looking at so much of what's considered the retro FPS community, at least like 70% of it is just shitting on the opposition or anything new that isn't a Doom game or an indie title. Why can't people accept these games? Why do we have to mindlessly crap on them and claim they killed the genre? I understand the stigma to a certain extent. Modern shooter mechanics would be milked throughout the 7th gen within the absolute worst way possible, like with cover, land weapon sandboxes, and slow gameplay. But these mechanics are not inherently bad like so many people believe. Many games too would even blend the old and new in many ways and pull it off right. I'm not saying you need to enjoy games like Halo or COD, but mindlessly saying they're objectively bad and were a net negative on the FPS genre is not only childish and closed-minded, but most of the time is objectively wrong. People say COD is slow, with players mostly camping, and yet it couldn't be further from the truth. Yes, you can sit in the corner of a map like a little bitch farming kills, but many including myself employ a run and gunplay style that can be modified to whatever you may please. That's the beauty of games like MW2, BO1, BO2, and even Modern Warfare 2019's Clash Creation and Gunsmith. It doesn't always result in a perfectly balanced game. But it creates so much variety within playstyles within its two weapon limit. Halo's weapon limit as well, believe it or not, creates variety constantly. The one thing many don't realize is that you aren't supposed to be playing with the same two weapons in Halo. You could try, but much of the time can backfire and result in death, especially if you try to keep control of a spawn containing a powerful weapon like a sniper, grav hammer, rocket, or sword. Halo excels when you're constantly picking up and throwing away weapons, using their strengths and flaws to your advantages constantly within gunfights. It's why Fiesta is such a beloved game mode, because it displays the sandbox firsthand, more than other contemporary modes like Slayer. Tell me, does this look slow to you?
Yet again, I'm not saying you have to like these games, you don't even need to play them. I can't control you like that. But again, saying that these games are all the same and are carried by a slow pace is objectively wrong. So many Halo games carry many distinct differences that Phantom can argue until they crumble of old age of which is the best and COD isn't any different. Yes, the core gameplay and mechanics can stay largely the same, but things like weapons, setting, time to kill, art style, perks, map design, extra game modes, and many more can separate them apart. The ironic thing too is, to me at least, indie retro FPSs are starting to fall in this trap of feeling the same. I know this take in particular is very subjective, especially considering if you say anything remotely negative about these games you'll be fucked hard. And I want to emphasize too that it's not to say that the majority of these games that have come out the past year are bad, but this genre is starting to fall to the very similar consistent gameplay and theme tropes so much to the point that I'm kind of getting bored by a lot of them that come out nowadays. And it's ironic too, because this kind of shit is what so many people critiqued modern FPSs for during the 7th gen. Oh boy, I sure wonder who I'll be killing in this brand new indie FPS. Demons? Robots? What kind of weapon am I gonna get? A shotgun? A machine gun? Pistol? All the above? My main point overall is that saying a game like Modern Warfare 2 is the same as Black Ops 2 is just objectively wrong, and people need to move away from this toxic mindset as it only turns off people who would maybe be interested in getting to some of these older games for themselves. Takes like Halo COD killed FPS are just unhealthy and don't contribute to any meaningful discussion whatsoever. And while this issue is one of the major reasons I want to make this, I want to talk about something else, difficulty and skill elitism. Ever since the release of Doom Eternal, we've seen two sides within its community. People who don't like the gameplay, and those who do. And I'm gonna say right off the bat, you don't have to like Eternal either. We prefer different things, and that's totally okay. In fact, I take interest in trying to find out where people come from within these discussions. What I, and many others, take issue with is when people claim things like the ammo management and the Marauder are quote-unquote bad game design, when it couldn't be any further from the case. Earning the power fantasy in Eternal is honest to god more rewarding than anything in 2016, but I'm starting to get off topic. My point is that this community has almost grown a fetishistic obsession with telling people who don't like the game to go fuck themselves and tell them to get good. And while I understand many of these people are in their own right closed minded and can't be satisfied, why care in the first place? Sometimes their minds can't be changed and even if they can, what good is shitting on them gonna do? It's just gonna turn them off from the game more. Same thing goes for playstyles. I've seen so many people pick up Eternal after watching high skill content creators thinking they could pull off the same shit they do easily at the same difficulty level and think they're bad at the game when they inevitably struggle. This sort of pressure from high level players, intentional or not, has done nothing more than put people off of the game. I'm not saying that high level player metas are inherently bad. I think they're cool and give players something to strive for. But acting like it's the only way to play is just stupid. Yeah, I take out Marauders with an SSG Ballistic Combo, but I've also seen Madmen on controllers do it with spamming lock-on rockets and grenades. There's more than one way to solve problems in Eternal, which is what makes its combat and gameplay legendary as far as I'm concerned. Any playstyle can work, and works in tandem with resource management. Which brings us to now with the release of The Ancient Gods Part 2. Part 2 has effectively created a divide yet again within the fanbase due to its easier difficulty and I just plain think it's dumb. Look, I like Part 2 and the changes made to Part 1 for the most part. You don't have to. I totally get the criticisms, there are parts I don't like myself. But there deserves a place in this community for people who don't want to absolutely sweat their balls off while playing Eternal. Which is why I agree with Hugo Martin's mindset with dividing this difficulty between campaigns and master levels. Part 1's launch difficulty, while I learned to enjoy later on, absolutely turned me the fuck off at first based on the pure notion that I believed I mastered the game on Nightmare. I got better, yes, and admittedly speaking, I should have played it first on Ultra Violence, but I would have had a much more positive impression if I didn't get so cocky. Part 2, while still absolutely kicking my ass on Nightmare, still feels fair even if it is objectively easier. It definitely isn't perfect, I'm a bit disappointed on how much crazy shit they don't do with the new enemies, which I'm sure we'll see more of with those master levels. And I understand the changes in difficulty both here and Part 1 being weird to many. Hugo has even mentioned this himself in various interviews with fans and on the dev streams. 
but I think, personally, this is a lot more welcoming to people. Remember, these DLCs are sold standalone, with battle mode included, and should be designed to account for that in mind. It's also why there's things like tutorials for single-player Slayer play. It's not perfect, and we're definitely going to see some changes to both soon to account for both sides of the argument, but yet again, crapping on people who like it amidst its flaws isn't healthy, and all that'll do is put people off from the game more. Same goes for those who inherently struggle with the game. They don't need to play on Nightmare or Ultraviolence, or need to use the same mods or runes that you do. What most people need to realize is that the people who like Part 2's difficulty are not the same as those who hate base game mechanics like ammo management. In that case, why the fuck would they be playing it? Sometimes people just want a lax challenge. I myself have been playing the base campaign again on Ultraviolence as of late, and while easier, it still offers a great degree of challenge to me which I enjoy, and that shouldn't be a bad thing at all. I believe personally any new players to the Doom IP or fast-paced shooters as a whole should play on Hurt Me Plenty, but I certainly wouldn't stop them from playing any lower than that. As long as they're having fun and enjoying the game, that's all that matters. And you're probably wondering, Cat, every community is shit in this way, why the fuck does it matter? Look. I love these games. I love them probably more than one person should. Doom Eternal alone is one of the main reasons I built a PC, and despite it being single player, I've put in nearly 300 hours into this game, and that won't stop anytime soon if post launch plans are anything to go by. It's honestly close to the original Half Life for being one of my favorite games ever made. And despite me being late to the party for COD and Halo, I've also put a shit ton of hours into them. I have nearly 700 hours in BO3 just for zombie modding. These games mean the world to me, and that's why I think they deserve better. I've grown more and more tired of looking at the retro FPS community every other week tear itself and others apart just for liking different things or an easier challenge. And it feels like in Eternal's case, most of them are diluted by it too. You see so many people pride themselves on how wholesome and welcoming the community is, yet if you ask me, it couldn't be further from the truth. I still remember seeing people say, particularly after the whole Tag 2 Discourse stuff, like, Oh wow, we fixed everything quick, we're so wholesome and welcoming and great community, guys. When it's established, there are still a lot of underlying toxicity problems in the community that no one's willing to talk about. Not just there, but also yet again towards other games. In general, we shouldn't be separated by modern and retro. At the end of the day, these are all FPS games, and should be grouped as such. Whether we're killing demons, cultists, or alien bastards, we all share the same love for firearms and rewarding fast-paced gameplay, and that's why I love this genre and these games so much. I love these games, and they deserve better.